Yes, and thank you for staying with us here on the station where you look and live. We are having testifying today. Uh, Jesse Mwangi is just sharing with us his incredible journey uh, from crime. I would call it maybe smart crime. Cause, uh, it's called me, organized crime. It's called organized <laughs> I don't even want to know the name. It's called organized crime. And Jesse, if I could take you a bit uh, back before we talk about who you are now and what you're doing. In, 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 when you're in prison, how did you fully come out? How did the cases just disappear? How, how, how did you finally become a free man? What was the process? You know, uh, if you understand the, how the courts operate, courts operate uh, on evidence that is produced in court. And you know, uh, as, 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 a, as an organized crime mastermind, you must know how to cover your footsteps. Um, you must really know how to cover your footsteps. So any evidence that is produced in court that uh, does not link you directly, it will always get you off the hook. What exactly happened while I was in prison? Um, the colleagues that we worked, to, we, we, we worked with and uh, that we were arrested uh, along with, they, they bore the, the, the biggest burden because uh, they were interacting with clients face to face. They signed some of uh, the documents. One of them was the owner of the company, was the director of the company that was involved in crime. So it was easier for them to be linked to that crime unlike me. So when you were in prison, they died. Uh, unfortunately, they died and uh, there's no way the case could, uh, could have, could have sustained itself in court. So it was found that uh, I was maliciously prosecuted. I was, an em I was just a mere employee of the company. Uh, and that's how, uh, summarily, uh, my case uh, was dismissed. Mm. Um, another thing was uh, I was denied bond. But you know, bond is a right of uh, every accused person. You are innocent until uh, proven guilty. So those are some of the grounds that are used uh, to challenge uh, the courts uh, to grant me bond. And that's how I ended up uh, uh, getting uh, the bond. And I will say that uh, it was not easy because um, most, most of my cases were not handled by a single judge. There are several judges that handled my case. I remember there was one of the judges that was dismissed. And, uh, one of the judges that uh, categorically had refused to give me bond, uh, he was uh, dismissed. And I must say, my prayers were really working. My prayers were really working while I was in prison because I used to pray and fast a lot mm -hmm. and just ask God to take over my battles, just the same way he told Jehoshaphat that the battles you're facing are not yours but are mine. Just take your position and see my deliverance. So I really stood on the word of God and I must say that uh, it really worked for me. My colleagues used tried to bribe their way out of getting the bond, but uh, things were thick. But for me, I must say that it is God who fought for me. And uh, the way he got me out of prison is just a, a miracle. Wow, powerful. And the friends you are with in crime, uh, maybe what happened to them, what was their fate? Are there some that you're still in contact with or did you take the advice of, you know, you mentioned the, the pastor talking to you and asking you to leave the county just to make sure your space is clear? You know something funny, in my crime life, um, I, I, was, I, was, I was among the best. I was among the best because I remember I even used to be hired. I used to be hired to go and execute uh, uh, some businesses that uh, people were not able to. And uh, I rose through the ranks. I remember they used to call me the president, uh, among us the cliques or friends that uh, we used to do this business, because I could have solutions. When they have challenges, they need to give out this statement, they need to talk to a client, tell them this and this and this. After they have come and given me the story, maybe they are stuck in the process. They could consult me and every idea I could give them, it could go and work out. So I rose through the ranks and they used to call me the president. They used to consult, consult me on array of issues. And uh, when I came out of prison, they still had to look for me because they were stranded. They were not, they, I remember uh, we used to talk, we used to communicate while I was in prison and they could tell me that, hey, 
since you got arrested, things are tough outside here. Uh, we don't know what to do. We really pray that uh, you come out faster. Uh, some of them used to come and visit me in prison. So when I came out, they really wanted me. They really wanted me on board. Uh, I remember the clique of friends of mine, they had uh, opened up an office somewhere and things were not uh, really working out. So they invited me, they gave me a position in that company, they gave me a car. You know, this it's, is after prison. After prison. They gave me a car, they told me, we now want you to run, we know you have the capacity to do this job. But uh, consciously, I remembered the vows I made to God while in prison and uh, my staying around Nairobi could have easily gotten me back into crime. And that's why the advice of, uh, of my pastor Njiri, of overcoming faith church uh, thicker road came in handy so i had to get out of this environment and so you went to uh kitale yes that's, own, that's the my place hometown. of your, that's your hometown yes. how did they accept you how was the reception you especially know, from your family yeah my, my 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 family i must say my mom was very supportive uh unlike uh, other members of my family She's the one who accepted me. You know, Joe, mama, uh, mama, ni mama. Uh, mama ni mama toka kama ni mwenda wazimu. <laughs> I really felt her love. Yeah. She accepted me. And you know what had gone around my hometown because I remember when I was arrested, it, uh, it was in the news and in the newspapers. So uh, my friends in my hometown got wind of it. So there were rumors in town that I'm um, so and so. Kumbe ni muizi na mwanaka kikuja pana magari kubwa kubwa kumbe. So the word was on the streets, but uh, chini chini. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, uh, generally, I might say my mom's love uh, overshadowed everything. Yes, yes. Uh, that's really good. And now also, now you go back to Kitale, you have nothing because you, you say there's no way you're going to build your, uh, your, your fortune once again on money that you got in, in, through bad association. So you're going back home. You don't have a car, you're used to having money, you don't have money. How did you rise up again and become the person you are now? And what do you do even right now? Yeah, uh, I had nothing when I came out of prison. Uh, I had to start from scratch. But uh, God being the God that uh, I saw with my eyes while I was in prison, I had full trust and confidence in him that is going to make a way irrespective of all the circumstances that are around me, that nothing was going to, 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 to happen. Mm -hmm. I got back to my knees uh, to just pray and tell God, you say in your word, uh, where there's vision, you'd always provide. I've always desired to do music for you. Provide. I desire to do business. I, uh, back, back in the days, I really loved to, to do farming. So luckily, in our neighborhood, when I came out of prison, I found a local NGO. It's called uh, Orphan, uh, Orphans for Orphans. Oga of, of organic for Orphans. It's, a, it's, a, it's an agricultural NGO. So they were offering free training uh, to do with organic farming. So I enrolled, my, uh, I enrolled for, for, for the course for one month. So I got uh, enlightened of uh, modern ways of farming, uh, not using this uh, uh, synthetic fertilizer, but using uh, manure to do farming and how to prepare the land and everything so i got some skills out of it so i began uh, doing it uh, personally so i've been doing uh, uh, growing traditional vegetables and uh, selling them uh, in our local town and my business has really picked up i got support from uh, another ngo uh, called uh, grow park uh, I, they have really been supportive I got some support from a company called a Seedco Company. They have been supportive. I got some support from a solar company that provide uh, solar machines for irrigation on the farm. It's called Solar Now. They have really supported my business. And everything has really picked up. Uh, another thing that uh, also m helped me start up is uh, my mom gave me capital, around 100,000 to begin with. So I started a cereal business. I do supply cereals to animal feed manufacturers in Tika, in Limuru, and uh, some parts of Kiambu. And uh, it's, it, it's been paying off. So uh, things have really picked up uh, so, so fast. And I'm just amazed uh, at how God can uh, really turn around my really turn around my situation. That's really powerful and encouraging. And maybe Jesse, having been in that kind of life, you probably know ways in which 
people can come out of it and not just come out of it but you also know understand you've said that most of the people that get into this are greedy people maybe if you could just talk on some of the ways you think can maybe eradicate these kinds of crimes and also talk to someone that is caught up in that maybe they feel like i am too graduated to do dirty or small jobs so i need to go for such kinds of jobs that will land you in cell eventually maybe talk to someone like that okay i really don't understand how the, the government works and how serious the government is interested in eradicating some of these crimes because when you go to prison you'll find all manner of people but uh, they are all heaped somewhere as, uh, as criminals uh, not uh, supposed to interact with the outside world. I will, I will advise the government to, to take some of these people who are arrested uh, doing some of these crimes to gather intelligence. It can be a very rich ground uh, of, of gathering intelligence uh, on how to counter some of these crimes because somebody like me, I can give a full detailed account of how these crimes, uh, these crimes uh, are executed or how they are, they are perpetrated in this land. But uh, nobody has ever approached me to ask me exactly what happened, got, got an interested in, uh, in getting to know exactly how these things happen step by step. But uh, I will not blame the government. As the Bible says that you are the light of the world and uh, the world is at pain waiting for the manifestation of the true children of God. With that consciousness, even as the Bible says in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 4, somewhere around verse 11, that uh, we should have nothing to do with the works of the, the dirty works of the dark worlds. We should expose. So I find it as an obligation as a Kenyan or as a former uh, organized uh, uh, crime mastermind to also share my story so that uh, I can enlighten uh, uh, the government uh, agencies uh, on how some of these crimes are perpetrated and also help them to maybe arrest these people or uh, enlighten the public uh, to avoid being caught up in such kinds of crime. And that to somebody out there uh, who thinks that uh, he cannot earn a living without uh, committing a crime, I want to tell you that uh, it is in vain. It's only God's blessings that add no sorrow. Because ultimately, the end of the road of a criminal, it's either death or a ushiko weko prison. Na ushiko weko prison ukiwa na miaka 20. Ufungo miaka zingine 20. Utoke prison ukiwa na miaka 40. You'll have wasted your life. And I know statistically, it nambiwa 75% of uh, the guys who are, in, who are in prison, 75%, they are between age 18 and age 35. So umeshikwa at the age of 18, maybe somebody amekutuma wende ukauze bangi, ama uende ushiku, unyonge mtu. Because some of these young men that are in prison, they are used by other people. So you'll end up wasting your life in prison for no apparent reason. The Bible tells us that uh, he who stole must steal no more, but uh, work hard with their own hands so that they can have enough to share with others. The secret of success, kwai life, needs work. Work, work, work. Work honestly, be diligent in what you are doing, don't be afraid of starting small. The Bible says we should not despise our days of small beginnings. Mi nilianza bila kitu, nilikuwa na kila kitu na zikapotea, na nikaanza bila kitu, sahi niko na kitu. Sistembe itaoni kiangalia nyuma labda kuna waskara na nifuata, ama niko na wasiwasi, ama niko na nini. I'm happy, I'm happy, at in fact, sahi niko na yo sense ya whatever I'm getting, I, 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 I'm responsible. Kwa sababu hile hizi hile ya kukuja haraka haraka, ndi unakimbia na ya kwa ba, unakimbia na ya kudanganya wasichana wenyewe, unakimbia na ya kufanya vitu. Inapote yaga tutu na shindo ipese meenda. Because easy come, easy go. So to my fellow youths out there, trade with your talents, trade with your skills, trade with your abilities. Wizi, hakuna mali itakupeleka. Utawawa ama waste your life in prison. Mm. Thank you so much, Jesse, for making time. That's really powerful. That's very encouraging. And remember, God has promised to bless the works of our hands. So the key to it, just work and trust in God. Lean not on your own understanding. This has been Testify with me, Maria Makao. Till next Thursday, may God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.